Hi, I'm Rob Vanstone. Welcome to our Time Machine. We traditionally discuss all sorts of nostalgic occurrences in Rough Riders history. A reference to 2019 really isn't that nostalgic, but in a sense it does take us back to 1951. Cody Fajardo, the Riders quarterback, exudes charisma, exudes personality. His performance on the field quickly endeared him to fans. He became a very popular player. They started selling t-shirts with some of his catchphrases on them. It just seems like in a matter of minutes, Cody Fajardo took Rider Nation by storm. And I started thinking, I wonder if it was like this in 1951 when Glenn Dobbs was the Riders quarterback and when Regina, when Saskatchewan were dubbed Dauberville. 1951, the Riders signed Glenn Dobbs amid huge fanfare. It was a huge story in Regina. Glenn Dobbs had been a Heisman Trophy finalist when he was a quarterback at the University of Tulsa in the 1940s. He was a first round draft choice of the NFL Chicago Cardinals. That's how big Glenn Dobbs was. He was a legend in American college football and a real star coming out of college. Cody Fajardo, too, was a tremendous college player. He threw for more than 9,000 yards in his career, ran for more than 3,000 at the University of Nevada. There's only two quarterbacks in NCAA football history who've done that, Cody Fajardo and Colin Kaepernick. So Cody Fajardo was a huge star coming out of college, or huge star in college, like Glenn Dobbs was, but there wasn't the same degree of fanfare when Cody Fajardo signs in Saskatchewan in February of 2019. The Riders had attempted to sign Bo Levi Mitchell away from the Calgary Stampeders, offered him $700,000 a year, but still he went back to Calgary. The Riders re-signed Zach Kalaros as a starting quarterback only three games into the 2019 season. Kalaros was his concussed, in comes Cody Fajardo and made his first start a week later and quickly made an imprint and became very popular. Glenn Dobbs, by contrast, was hugely popular from the moment he signed with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Think about this. In 1951, he determined that the Rough Riders offer was superior to that of an offer from the Chicago Bears. The Riders outbid an NFL franchise. They outbid the legendary George Hallis, Papa Bear, for the services of Glenn Dobbs. This was in the winter of 1951. It was a cold winter. I guess there's never really a warm winter in this climb. And, and the Riders held a quarterback club luncheon at the old Grand Theater and they invited Glenn Dobbs up to Saskatchewan to meet the public. And he arrives, it's minus 30, but it was such a big deal that Glenn Dobbs was in town, the Riders' new quarterback. And people not only packed the Grand Theater to meet and hear from Glenn Dobbs, they were lined up for blocks. They wanted to meet this huge star, this new quarterback with this big reputation. Well, even though it was minus 30 or colder, the wind chill was like a knife, Glenn Dobbs went outside, introduced himself to all of the people who were shivering, waiting to, to meet him, quickly endeared himself to the public. And it wasn't much different in the spring of 1951, the Taylor Field fence needed painting. So, the riders not having an abundance of money, they asked the fans to help out and fans showed up with paintbrushes and buckets of paint. Well, who was also wielding a paintbrush outside the stadium that day? Glenn Dobbs, with fans to his left, fans to his right, painting the fence at Taylor Field. Glenn Dobbs was among them and didn't take long for Glenn Dobbs' performance as a Rough Rider to justify the reputation and all the hype that surrounded his arrival. An absolute phenomenon. In the 1951 season, the Riders posted an 8-6 and six record, which wasn't that spectacular, but it was good enough to finish first in what was then the Western Interprovincial Football Union. In 14 games that season, Glenn Dobbs threw 28 touchdown passes. Over the previous four years, the Riders had thrown 29 touchdown passes. Glenn Dobbs did that in one year. Amazing. 28 touchdown passes at a time when the aerial game wasn't really a big factor in Canadian professional football. Not only that, he was a tremendous punter. He averaged more than 44 yards a punt, punted for 20 singles that year. So a double threat, could do it with his powerful throwing arm, could punt the ball. Didn't have to punt a lot because he was such a great quarterback, the offense moved the ball pretty well. Riders got to the Western final. It was a best of three back then. They played the Edmonton Eskimos. Turns out the third game was in Regina at Taylor Field. The Riders won by one point. And after, a ga after the game, fans tore down the goalposts and they took them everywhere, downtown, City Hall, 
everywhere you could take fragments of goalposts, the Ryder fans took them. And one of the places they stopped was at the Glen Dobbs home on Montague Street. They deposited fragments of the goalposts of the uprights on Glen Dobbs's front lawn. They waited for Glen Dobbs and his wife to return home so that they could salute him in person. And there he was with splinters of wood on his front lawn. That's how popular Glen Dobbs was. A week later, the Riders were in the Grey Cup against the Ottawa Rough Riders. Ottawa won 21-14. This was when touchdowns were worth five points. Riders were banged up. They were missing all sorts of players with, with injuries. Some played while hurt. That includes Glenn Dobbs, who had a sore knee. It was never quite the same after 1951 for Glenn Dobbs. The knee injury was a, was a big factor. He was in his early 30s. He was the Riders' player coach in 1952. That didn't go especially well. Returned in 1953. And that was it. Glenn Dobbs was only here for three years. In only one of those years was he spectacular. But what a year it was. That was the year that Regina, as I mentioned, was named Dauberville. People would send letters to Glenn Dobbs and they would address them to Dauberville. They wouldn't even mention Regina or Saskatchewan, but the letters would find their target, as Glenn Dobbs often did while throwing passes on behalf of Saskatchewan Rough Riders. There are license plates honoring Glenn Dobbs. He was that big. And for years and years and years after, despite the fact he was only here for a short time, people remembered Glenn Dobbs so affectionately. And, and, and the affection was reciprocal. He loved being up here. He just, every opportunity he got to salute Ryder fans and to come up here for sports dinners afterwards, he did that. In 1960, he came up here for a sports dinner and said, I don't live here anymore, or something to that effect, but Regina will always be home. He ended up coaching at the University of Tulsa and became a legendary head coach at the same university at which he'd starred as a player. And of course, as you might expect, there was a focus on aerial football. The team was known as the Golden Hurricane. What a great nickname for a football team. And they loved throwing the football. And with Glenn Dobbs as the head coach, you'd expect that. Two future Rough Riders played under Glenn Dobbs at the University of Tulsa. Henry Dorsch, who was uh, eventually inducted into the Rough Riders Plaza of Honor, and a receiver named Rick Eber who was a great pass catcher at the University of Tulsa under Glenn Dobbs. In fact, in one game, Rick Eber caught 20 passes for more than 300 yards. In one game, Rick Eber played for the Rough Riders in 1973, so it's kind of interesting if you look at it. Rick Eber was coached by Glenn Dobbs and caught passes from Ron Lancaster, two of the great quarterbacks in Ryder history. Rick Eber is a, a link to both of them. Glenn Dobbs was so phenomenally popular in Tulsa that they eventually named a street, or a drive, I suppose, on the University of Tulsa campus in his honor, Glenn Dobbs Drive. What a wonderful man. I had a chance to interview him by phone a couple of times uh, after long, after decades after his career. I was minus 13 when Glenn Dobbs made his debut with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. What a wonderful man. He was, he was listed in the Tulsa phone directory. It was pretty easy to get his number, and he had all day to talk just could not have been a warmer, nicer man. Both times he thanked me for phoning him and both times he asked me to send him a copy of the article that I wrote, which of course I did. And after both of the articles I wrote about Glenn Dobbs, he wrote me a thank you letter. And even though I never saw him play, I opened the mailbox twice and realized in person how great Glenn Dobbs was and how great he always will be. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you've enjoyed this latest in the series of Time Machines. If you enjoy this video, if you enjoy what we're doing, feel free to subscribe to the Leader Post's YouTube channel. There's a little green insignia. If you'd like to click on that, you'll be notified when future videos become available. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks to Don Beck and Clubhouse 23 for these great surroundings. Have a great day and take care.